what's going on everybody back again with another video and today we are looking at a Marlin 1895 Trapper now this isn't your average everyday Marlin 1895 Trapper as you can see it has been tacticalized if that's even a term and if it's not we're gonna go ahead and invent it today because modernizing cowboy guns is fun and why the heck not We'll get into some of the things that you're seeing on this modernized cowboy gun and whether or not this is practical or not for today's day and age. Spoiler alert, no, it's not. But is it fun? Absolutely. freaking lootly And uh, obviously, some of the pros and cons of just the cartridge itself and uh, whether or not there is any type of real-world usage for it nowadays, given the cost, which is ridiculous. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. What you're seeing here, again, is a 16 and a half inch Marlin 1895. This is the Trapper model. Uh, comes from basically Ruger, who purchased Marlin not too long ago and started coming out with the Trapper and SBL models. The SBL model is a little bit longer, so that's gonna be an 18 and a half inch barrel. The SBL model is going to be a little bit more of a polished stainless versus what you see with the Trapper is more of a matte stainless. So that's just another small difference. The magazine tube will hold one extra round on the SBL. Given that you've got a couple extra uh, inches of barrel, you also have a couple extra inches of mag tube as well. So with that being said, let's talk about what we've got going on over here. The majority of what is... Basically on the receiver and on the lower end of this gun is going to be from Ranger Point Precision. Ranger Point Precision is a company that specializes in everything and anything 1895, 1894, or basically any type of cowboy gun you can think of. They do a lot of great things with internals, things like the triggers, really nice loading gates here. These are made out of aluminum. They have a little bit more flex to them. They're very nicely milled here for like a bolt to, to uh, find its way into the magazine tube a little bit uh, easier with less force. They also do obviously the levers, uh, both in the medium and large size loops. So if that's your thing, if you do want a a quicker action or charge the, the uh, rifle, you would probably opt for a medium size. I put the paracord wrap here myself, so that's not something that you would find if you do purchase one of their levers. So they also do have the quick detach um, for the levers. So if you want to swap those out or if you want to take apart your, your uh, rifle a little bit easier, you can opt to get one of these. They have a lot of different finishes that they have. Uh, for them, different etchings, things like that. So they also have a lot of other internal components. Like I said, uh, you know, triggers, hammers, pins, they have all kinds of stuff. Even if you're trying to buy replacement parts, they offer all that kind of stuff. What I also have here is a chisel manufacturing stock. This is one of my favorite pieces of this gun. It's a really beautiful and one piece aluminum stock. And it does come with slots here to be able to put in your optics and uh, be able to put some ammunition and hang it off your stock over here. Really cool. It also comes with the adjustable cheek rest. Excellent, excellent quality. I can't say enough about how impressed I was when I first got this out of the box. Midwest Industries uh, actually has a couple different rails. This is the extended M-Lock rail. It comes with the top rail as well. You can opt with or without the top rail if you just wanted the handguard and work with the rail that already comes with the 1895. You can do that as well. Save yourself some money, but this one comes with both, so it gets you the extended rail all the way out to the front. If you're gonna mount some sort of a light laser or anything else that uh, you'd wanna mount to your rifle. All right at the front over here, I have a precision armament hyper tap muzzle brake. This is for the uh, 45 caliber. Loud sucker, but man oh man, does it look beefy and it looks vicious. So I've got an Olight Odin. Uh, with the pressure pad right over here. Really nice quality lights. Don't cost you a lot, but they have a lot of cool features, including magnetic uh, charging cables that charge right off of the back end of this flashlight. So really in love with these O-lights. They're, you know, for the money, really, really good quality, um, really convenient, and again, great features. Over here, I've got a Hoptic USA. Uh, this is just a match saver type mount over here. 
And finally, we have an EOTech, this is the XPS2. So that's everything that went into tacticalizing this platform. Now, let's talk about how much it would cost to tacticalize a cowboy gun. Now, let's just assume that you're going to do your own variation of, you know, these different parts and pieces. Figure that you are going to be in this thing for at least $1,000 to $1,500 more than what you paid for the gun itself. With that being said, the guns are not cheap. Uh, they come from Marlin uh, at about $1,600 for the tra Trapper. It could vary uh, to about $1,800. And the SBL actually comes in at just shy of $2,000, if not a little bit over that amount. So not a cheap gun to begin with. The ammunition is asinine. These are 180 rounds, but uh, whatever type of rounds you can find right now in 45.7, you're going to be looking at a minimum of about $2 per round uh, to more readily available stuff is gonna be right around three, three and a half dollars per round. So you're talking incredible amounts of money that are gonna go into opting for a platform like this. However, the fun for the money factor is out of this world. These are some of the funnest guns to shoot. This is definitely that gun in my collection to where every time I've taken it out, the first shots, it's just like, a smile from ear to ear and it's always because of that manual action because it's such an obnoxious round because it's it's a very different gun it's it's kind of that blend of old and new it's different enough and it feels good enough to shoot to where uh, it puts you know a lot of joy in anybody that would take this thing out to the range it's so fun it's very different and I could say the same about just about any manual actioned rifle it's a little bit different with the with the uh, Marlin over here just because of the iconic uh, nostalgia that comes along with this platform of being the gun that won the West, right? The, the 4570 round is iconic and, and the platform obviously so. It, it really makes all of those components come together in a really special manner to where you've got to just love it. People next to you go nuts because it's loud as hell, it thumps. It is definitely fun for the money. That factor is absolutely positively there. When it comes to practicality, maybe not so much because obviously not only the uh, ammunition being expensive, which we can say about a lot of different rounds nowadays, but the, the action itself, not too quick. I mean, regardless of what you do to try to speed up the action, you're going to be significantly slower than on any semi-auto. That goes without saying. However, it's cumbersome too. It's a little bit uh, of a longer rifle and this one's only a 16 and a half inch rifle however because you're constantly having to pull that lever back and forth it just kind of makes it to where uh the weight shifts back and forth a lot going through that lever action there's a lot of there's a lot of little things like that that would not make it my first choice for any type of defensive situation for hunting though this would be excellent as a matter of fact the round is excellent for hunting as well um, they call this the t-rex gun for a reason I have no doubt in my mind that uh, a couple of these rounds would be able to knock out a T-Rex. <laughs> I might be exaggerating, but you get the point. You know, big game hunting, bears, lions, tigers, you know, all that stuff. I, I would say that this is more than capable of handling that situation. I would say that the only concerns that I had with the uh, Marlin out of the box were the trigger itself has a little bit of play, as you can see over here. This is likely something I'm going to change, and I'm not sure if this is something that is kind of a, an attribute to all of these lever action rifles. The other thing I, I, I wasn't crazy about was just some of the finish in terms of like the end cap to the, to the magazine tube, you know, just a flat stainless piece and uh, taking it down is not very easy. You're basically removing this screw, which has a stud that drives through the magazine tube itself. So, you know, it's it's a lot of finagling. Obviously, you would have to take off the handguard in order to achieve all that. Everything that occurs back here at the receiver, um, taking it apart, all the internal components, all that, no problems at all. I think that they did a really good job. All the pieces seem very nicely machined. You know, no tooling marks or anything like that. From what I've heard in terms of before Ruger took over Marlin and when Remington had it, I heard of a lot of QC issues. 
surprise, surprise coming from Remington. It seems like Ruger has put the final touches to make sure that this is an operable system um, right out of the box and there's not uh, a whole lot you have to worry about in terms of just kind of the overall quality. The trigger is actually quite nice. It basically has zero movement. It has the forward movement, which is kind of odd to me, but again, has no movement. You're pretty much already at a wall. And then it's a little bit of a heavier pull. I'd say about four and a half to five pounds. But uh, with that being said, it, it breaks pretty clean. I mean, as you can see, not bad at all. The charging is not bad at all, uh, especially with the medium sized loop. I did have a large size loop that came with the gun. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not exactly the, the fastest charging system in the world either. So any type of small advantage that you can gain from putting parts that kind of make you a little bit faster, I would say is obviously the way to go. I forgot to mention that these M-Lock covers over here come from Rail Scales. This is their micro dot configuration. I love Rail Scales, love their stuff. This is a JMAC Customs hand stop. I will say, I love the look of this thing, um, but it is a little bit sharp especially when you're using it on a high recoil platform such as the 1895. So just kind of keep that in mind. Keep in mind too with the uh, Midwest Industries rail over here, if you are putting it on a trapper, unfortunately you will not be able to get the front sight post that they offer you in the box. You won't be able to get it to fit on the barrel without modification because it'll just come up too close to the rail over here. You would have to shave off some of this top rail, which I was not willing to do. So I kept the stock front sight post over here from uh, Marlin, and I did put in the rear sight post over here that came with the uh, Midwest Industries rail. Here's a closer look at the stock. So again, this is chisel manufacturing, and I mean, one solid piece of aluminum. Gorgeous. I mean, you can look at some of the some of the detail that goes into the actual grip itself. You can see all that milling, the little uh, textured design over here. You have like a nice little foam pad that comes on the cheek riser. And again, it's adjustable for height. You have a QD slot back over here for a sling and you have a hook as well. And again, these screws or these screw holes are gonna be for your optics and you can add basically however many you can fit in here. So pretty damn cool. There's a look at the, uh, at the paracord job on the lever right here. And once again, there's that quick detached screw for the lever. Ranger Point logo on there. And again, the loading gate. Beautiful, just really nice touch really nice touch from uh, ranger point precision and it's just a beautiful beautiful rifle beautiful rifle all around if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be reminded about the next video when it comes up until then i'll see you next time